All right. Now on to a more positive note. It's time for Poetry News with JDZ. How y'all doing? It's time for the Tay to the D to the Z. Hey. Y'all doing okay? Yeah. Y'all yeah. doing fine? Yeah. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Yes, yes, yes. It is I, TDZ, with some poetry news for y'all. And today, I want to tell y'all about... Oh, oh, that's so cool. Y'all see that? That's so cool. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> that is cool. Oh, I love this. Oh, yes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> or <Sorry>, SpongeBob. <laughs> this is the topic of today's poetry news. Well, Who what is that? That this is Lenny Kravitz. Oh, okay. Did you know okay. who Lenny Kravitz is? Doesn't he look so cool? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Let me let let me go ahead and fully put him on here now. Yes, folks. Uh. <clears throat> topic of the day is mr kravitz of course you know the all too famous uh, uh rock star of the 90s and early 2000s lenny kravitz um he had an interview recently and in his interview <clears throat> he says that he feels like he had to face a lot of adversity from both the regular media and the black media. Hmm. Now, he's been saying that he says it's because, you know, he's a black guy in the realm of rock. And rock is not always so kind to black people. And so he felt like he had to fight to kind of be known as not just the black guy who does rock and roll, but as a guy who is on par with the best rock stars of all time. But not only that, he felt like the black media didn't fully support him. He says it took him 10 years to even be put on like the vibes list of most influential black people. You know, mm -hmm. he says, <clears throat> he noted how long it took 10 years to get on vibes who's who list and he's never been celebrated by BET or Source. So Lenny Kravitz says, to this day I've not been invited to a BET thing or a Source Awards thing. And it's like, here's a black artist who has reintroduced many black art forms has broken down barriers just like those that came before me broke down. That is positive and they don't have anything to say about it. You know, Lenny Kravitz doesn't do hip-hop. He doesn't do R and B. He doesn't do any of our subgenres. He does straight up rock music. So, how do y'all feel? I'll, I'll give you more about that. But how do y'all feel about that? You know, a black guy says black media has a rep ha hasn't been the kindest to me. I. I feel like that's on par with black media um, because we and hear me out um, because it um, there's another black rock star um, dang I can't I'm, his name is like on the tip of my tongue but it's escaping me at the moment um, Jimi Hendrix there we go Mm -hmm. Um, and he's, I don't know what black media was like back then, but nowadays it's more of pop and hip hop. There's no really, um, there's no real, um, love for other genres. Like we do, we do. There's R and B. Pop. 
Yeah, yeah. But those are the those are the only three. Those are the only three we give love to. We don't we don't give love to rock. We don't give love to alternative much. Um we don't there's not really any black country stars who stick with country. Darius Rucker. Well, even him, he's he's more of in the era where we were up, up accepting more accepting of uh, black people in other genres. Hmm. In my opinion, anyway, um, there's there was um. There was what there there like like I was saying, pop, hip hop, and R and B are the top three genres that us as black people really give love to mm-hmm. and really focus on. Well, you know, um, rock and roll is just R and B sped up. True, hmm. true. That's a, that's a, that's true. Um, Mama Thornton said that mm-hmm. she was one of the first black rock stars, black women rock stars. Mm-hmm. Um, um, even when I, I would oh, go ahead. Even when um Childish Gambino did his experimental album, there was no. Um, it was like it didn't get much play. There was only a few songs that people really liked, and it was only like, like I said, it didn't really get much play. And you don't really hear about it now because it's not really a hip hop or pop or R and B album. And he did like he did two albums like that, and I enjoyed both of them, really. But yeah, um, I feel like that's an example of music genres being segregated. I think for a long time, like rock and roll, although it started with African Americans, it was. Like we were sort of pushed out of it, especially when Elvis Presley came became more famous and he was a mainstream um, mm-hmm. artist and he became the face of rock and roll, um, especially in the fifties and sixties. Because during that era of segregation, like although black people we had our own clubs and things, we were very much underground and like um, I think it was like music that allowed us to like sort of bridge into white clubs and then when there was finally a white person like singing and performing rock and roll it made it like acceptable for white people and then once that happened we weren't really a part of the mainstream form of it like that anymore Mm -hmm. and i feel it's still marketed very much to white people um like and i'm just saying specifically white people because i can't even think of like a Carlos Santana, um, mm-hmm. but like I think there are segregated music genres like um, the blues, R and B, like all the ones that we've talked about. I just think it's it's sort of like redlining. Like black pe- black artists are still sectioned off, and I think it's just sort of a coded way of thinking. You know, um, black radio stations still have to make money. Like R and B is still our most popular genre, so I think also now it's a factor of it may be not economical to try to like chance, you know, an experimental or like less popular black genre because you don't want to lose out. But it doesn't mean that black people like don't work in these genres or aren't good at making this music or aren't present in it. I think it's just the result of how the world was and that we just haven't shifted away from it or like heightened our awareness enough to be proactive about changing. 
Chuck Berry was the first rock and roll artist. Mm -hmm. Among them. Yeah. Then, and then Elvis came and pretty much he did he did the hip swivel. He had the look. And he became the king of pop, uh, rock and roll. When really, if we want to be completely honest, Chuck Berry should be the king of pop, rock and roll. Or Fats Domino. Whitney Houston. Oh, no, no, no. Tina well, Turner. She was a well, rock star. Well, well, she's considered the queen of rock and roll. So, right. You know, so. They get we got one, but yeah. Michael Jackson was a rock star, but they call him the the king of pop. I mean, he did like push. Michael Jackson did a lot of genres, honestly. Yeah, like yeah, he, he, I think king of pop fits him perfectly because pop is an ever encompassing soup like genre that super genre. You know, I think, yeah. I think with him, he like pioneered pop though, because his sound was so popular. And just what you said, he has so many different sounds. Yeah, he, 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 he I said he, he, he's, um, <laughs> he's, he's like, um, Michael was a person from what I can kind of, from what a little bit I've studied, Michael's whole thing was that he just didn't want to do the same thing twice. Yeah. You know, he like if he made it like, for instance, you could describe all his albums as like different genres or subgenres because off the wall was like disco funk. Uh, right. You know, thriller is like R and B, like eighties R and B. Bad is like eighties pop slash rock. Um, da uh, dangerous is New Jack Swing. History is kind of like nine mid nineties kind of whatever the heck he was trying to do, you know. Well, in in history, it's not just um, new music, but it's older um, music too. Right? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. put on um, he put smooth cr criminal, um, bad. He put a bunch of he. he that was more of a comp compilation album. It's it's a, uh, it's a album. It's a two part. Right. It's it's the compilation part, and then it's like the newer music that either he just he had just made, or he was like holding on to for a minute, you know. Yeah. And then of course, and then you get his like, what was it? What was the album he put out? Uh, 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 freaking the one he put out, Invincible. That's like yeah. Too early two thousand soul like neo soul like flow achieve he had like different producers for each of his albums giving him different sounds you know and even within those albums there's different sub drums like he he did he did a lot and I think to go back to like Lenny Kravitz I think it's like we don't part of part of him is right we don't give a lot of respect to like our non you know. We don't get a lot of respect to like our non um, hip hop R and B stars. We don't, and a part of that is. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Tay. I was just gonna say, like with the BET Awards, I don't even think they have like a rock award. They're really mm -hmm. just hip hop and R and B. They're exclusive to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw someone say, you know, Eminem's been invited to BET Awards because he, he was within the genre, you know. Yeah. Like you but know, and I feel like white people can cross those genre boundaries, but black people can't really do the same thing as easily. I mean, yeah, it's like a cultural thing for us, I guess, but it's like um the thing that's happening with country music, like you could be like a black country music star, but it's like you have to fight to be categorized as country, even though you're making country songs. You know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Sorry. With with um, you it's even hard for white artists to really merge into the um 
the hip hop uh, R and B genre because they're seen as culture vultures. They don't respect the the genre. They they don't um they don't respect the the history of it. When well, I, in all honesty, because I agree with you, but I also don't. I I agree with you to an extent. No, I I I'm not the one that's saying it. I'm just saying oh, that's no. why. But but no no, I agree that that is a thing, but I also believe it is easier for a white person to come into hip hop and R and B than it is for a black person to go to the other genres, and partially that is because of black people. So yeah. think of as many white R and B artists as you can think of: Tina Marie, uh, 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 Hall and Justin Oak, Timberlake, Justin Timberlake, Bieber, even. Eminem. Whoa. Four minutes. Mm hmm. Mac Miller. Whoa. Jojo. Mm hmm. Whoa. Um, Justin, well, Timberlake was more like a, he was a boy band person first. And when he, so went, that's when why, he was solo, Robin Thick. Robin, Robin yeah. Thick. But you know, Smith, you know, Sam a, lot, a lot of people before he did. Of music video, thought he was black. So, freaking a, freaking um, what's that man? Because he was singing R and B. Yeah, he's singing R. Like, like, what's that man? And he's an R and B artist. Like, a part of it is marketing and commercialization. Yeah, he had a lot of soul. Oh, what's that man's name? The man he just R passed away recently. You're the same to know what soul is supposed to sound like. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know it instinctively, but it's like we're played music. I guess that sounds soulful, or like we're told that it sounds soulful. You can think it on your own, but I just feel like there's a part of marketing that tells us to associate soulfulness with like this particular sound. And because we. Um, connected to like a black person, we instantly think the person you're seeing is black, but so, that's not always the case. So to kind of like give my final point on it, Bobby Caldwell, by the way, was the name of the guy who, who who did uh What You Won't Do for Love. And when his video first came out, like people his, his song came out before the video, people thought he was black. And then in the video, in the beginning of the video, he's like shrouded in darkness. And then, and then he comes out of the shadows and you feel he's white. And people were like, what the? But I think it's almost like we black people, a lot of black people, we see it as almost like a novelty. Kind of like, a, oh my gosh. Like when a white person does the genres that we're known for, because it's like, oh, white boy has soul. That's nice. And we're, we're more eager to take them in. You know, we, we're more eager to let them come to the cookout because, you know, that's cool to us. Like they're trying to, do the things that we do and we can tell what's genuine and what's not like we knew miley cyrus wasn't genuine when she was in her bangers era we knew yeah. she wasn't genuine about Ooh. that you remember miley cyrus and her, oh, bangers, her, bangers, era? Era. I yeah. her bangers era she was making pop music and i also feel like culturally black people are like that we're like that because we want to be accepted like regardless we're still not the dominant population mm -hmm. of society the so it's like oh you're trying to get with us great because we're always fighting to get with with them. And so, but also we're so weird about black people branching out and doing different things. And that's why I feel like Lenny Crab, that's why I, I feel like that's part of why Lenny Crab just doesn't get as much credit as he does within the black community because we're so funky about like, you know, oh, you're doing that white people stuff, aren't you? You know, like how many people have heard that yeah. before in their life? You know, like- yeah, I've, I've been called an OAO. Yeah 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 I've, I've been told that i talk white and i feel like that's a thing within our community where we we just reinforce the rules that white people have put upon us within our own community mm -hmm. i think it's a subconscious mm -hmm. thing like we don't even realize we're doing it because it's like we're taught to try to fit in with that social standard mm -hmm. and in that we put each other down instead of embracing our culture for what it is mm-hmm so yeah you know and as a small small little additional thing i saw some people say that let part of it is lenny kravitz's fault because his agent white guy 
was telling him to not interact with black media all that much. So take that for with a take that for what you will. So you know uh, that's that piece of news. Real quick, uh, you know Henry Kissinger is dead. The internet is celebrating, and it's kind of crazy. Uh, Henry, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger is the uh, former Secretary of State of the United States of America from the 70s, yeah, like yeah. the late 60s. Uh, uh, everything that you, if you think about, if you think that America gets involved in too many things and uh, costs a lot, you know, especially other, other countries' political movements and ruins those countries, yeah, Henry Kissinger was probably the father and or at least the granddaddy of that, depending on who you are. Uh, <laughs> Um, he helped destabilize Vietnam. He helped destabilize Laos, Cambodia, Chile, uh, uh, a bunch of African countries, yeah. you know, uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh, you know. So basically, when he, ba he's known as a really awful person because he, he took, he basically was just like, well, body's a body. So uh, <laughs> there's actually, a, there was actually, there's actually a subreddit called, is Henry Kissinger body's dead yet? And when a body's wait, one second. A mm -hmm. body's a body sounds so crazy, right? Yeah, it, it, it's it's it, 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 it's worse not, in more ways than one. I'm not gonna let you laugh for 20 minutes on this one, B Mike. Not this time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to get to that real quick because the internet is celebrating. The subreddit is Henry Kissinger is, is Henry Kissinger dead yet? He they they celebrated. They're having like a party. Freaking people from Cambodia and Vietnam and Laos and Bangladesh and Chile. Oh, they're having parties about this man. But here's the crazy part. He lived to be a hundred. So, you know, the worst person you know got to live a full life, bro. Crazy. It's crazy. How is he allowed to have that much power like that? Because it's all in the name of saving America, keeping America safe, quote unquote. All in the name of fighting communism, quote unquote. You know, you know, American uh, government will do anything. Like America has gotten involved in other countries' politics for like ever, and all Kissinger just allowed. Uh, if you do the math, Kissinger's policies have probably gotten as many people killed as the Holocaust. And that's kind of crazy. We're talking like millions of people. So yeah. That's uh, keeping the world a safe place for democracy. And Sorry. he and, and he was a white man in power. And he was a white man in power. By the way, I'm pretty sure it was either him, which by the way, it's either him, no, 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 no. I'm thinking about Jagger, Jagger Hoover. Jagger Hoover was the head of the FBI that's a whole other story. Just know, yeah, 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 yeah. Just know, none of them were good people. None of them were good people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So just wanted to go. Just wanted to go over Henry Kissinger real quick. Uh, in in the words of the internet, of uh, rest in peace. So yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. That was poetry news, and and that is poetry slam for y'all tonight. We are out of here. You have been listening to poetry slam with K Bells, your boy Napoleon B. Mike. Take it easy. Good night, everybody.